Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for a Dyson Sphere program update and in fact welcome to my uh, brand new shiny processor factory. So in the previous um, few episodes I've, I've been messing around with all of the science down on back on the home planet which I've renamed Norvis to stop myself getting confused and I ran into the problem where for for, um, for, for a number of the science packs I think it's both yellow, is it both yellow and green? Let's have a quick look. Uh, purple and green sorry. Yes these both require processors so purple requires the processors straight up as you can see at the bottom of the screen there whereas green requires the blue processors which require processors and other stuff to make them and that's meant that I've had a massive shortage of, of processors being made so I've come off to this other planet over here um, I've come out to Icarus uh, sorry not Icarus that's the name of the, the, the ship to Titan um, because Titan has an enormous quantity of um, of copper on it so if you look over here we can see 15 and a half million copper and processes are really really copper intensive for the production and over on um, Norvis up here I'm down to less than a million copper ore so I decided it'd be a good idea to come over here and start doing my building out on this planet so making the processes requires a number of ingredients as is as is traditional for well, everything um, as you can see along here we've got a big uh, we've got a tower that is bringing in all kinds of stuff We've got the silicon coming in remotely, so from another planet. We've got copper coming in locally, and we've got iron ore coming in locally as well, and paint coming in from uh, from remote as well. So this means we can then pass all of these things out. The um, the iron ore is being turned quickly into iron plates, copper ore into copper plates here, and I've set up an, a fairly large area of smelting here. So we've got, um, as you can see, we've got three ranks of um, copper smelteries, two ranks of iron, and these are all double belts that are coming out here. So this, this is this is in fact a double decker bus coming out this way, if you'll pardon the expression, because um, we've got the I've got the usual green belt bringing it out on a single layer and then stacking it in a in a stackermatron. So we've got low, so we've got double belts of this coming out and that means at the other end of here because iron and copper uh, smelt one to one I've got two belts coming out of each side of the two, two belts coming out from each process each um each smeltery area and then we're stacking that and putting it through a splitter here so we've now got this this double belt of um, of copper coming out so we've got one two three double belts and then two double belts of iron coming out as well and that is because making, unsurprisingly, making processes is, is, is a very uh, copper intensive process, as we've all learned from Factorio, and it's the same applies here. So this ice is weird to walk on, it's that noise. Uh, right, so yes, then we're making the um, the electronic circuits over here, or green circuits as I tend to insist on calling them. Um, and that's that's a copper and iron recipe, so those are being made. And again, the same sort of same sort of system. We've got uh, it making. Um, we've got the two belts coming in. Let's check the recipe for these things. It's two iron and one copper. Right, so what, how, 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 do, how do I do this? I have completely forgotten. Oh yes, so we've got a, the copper belt is being split, whereas we're bringing in two separate iron belts. So we've got uh, two belts of iron coming in, one belt of copper coming in, and those are all double belts. So that means we get four single belts of um, green circuits coming out. And I could stack them, except I didn't want to, because over here I should get to that in a moment. Um, then in here we're making the electronic components. These are a bit limited because we're a bit short of silicon, which we'll touch on in a moment. Um, but again, once again, we've got the double belts of silicon coming in, double belts of copper, and this I think is a two to two, is it? Yeah, no, two, sorry, two silicon and one copper. So once again, how, how have I done this? Oh yes, I've got I've got one copper belt running up the middle, and that's feeding the machines on both sides. But the silicon, each each belt is feeding the machines only on its side. So the the copper belt is supplying twice as many machines as the silicon belts are. Um, and then we've got um, belts of where am I bringing? Oh yeah, sorry. Yes, down the sides we've got the belts of the um, uh, electronic components being brought out. So we've got, so where we've got the, we've got the, essentially we've got a double belt of, of, of silicon going in and a half of a double belt, so I suppose a single belt of copper going in, and then that makes a single belt coming out because of the ratios up here, where it's uh, it's two two silicons to one one um, uh, one one electronic component. So that means over here I've got um, the, the, these belts would in theory be full, apart from the supply problems, uh, would in theory be full of the electronics components and the electronic circuits. Those are then brought over to here and I've deliberately not doubled these up because to make these, in, to do the, the full length with, that way with the processors would take quite a lot of space up so I decided I'd go wide rather than long with these. It also saves me the effort of having to restack them as well. But the recipe for a processor is, is uh, two, two of each to one, one processor. So that means we're basically only, whilst we're putting in um, a full belt of, in theory at least, we're putting in a full belt of, uh, of green circuits and, and um, electronic components, we're only getting half a belt out on the other side. But rather than bothering to, to to merge the belts or anything like that, I decided it was easier just to um, just to shove it all straight into this um, into this tower here and call that done. 
And so here, as you can see, we've got a huge number of um, of the processors in, in stock here, actually. This is going really, really well. Um, it's not quite full, but it's pretty close, and, the, and it's, we're easily keeping up with demand. Now, at least some of that is because I'm not doing any research, but it's still, it, it's working well. So this is now making it available to be uh, remotely, which means I can have spaceships come in from Norvis to come over and grab the uh, grab the processors from here and take them back over to be up to, for, the, for the upgrades. Now, I realised as I was working through this that I got uh, that um, I've been basing my maths on how many machines I was putting in. I've been basing it on um, on assuming that it only took one uh, one second. And sort of, no, assuming that the, the recipes were were correct. So if we if, we, if we look in here, um, sorry, not correct. I'll, I'll I'll explain in a moment. If we look in here at say the um, the processor recipe, that takes two components and two circuits and three seconds. So in theory, if you have a full belt, if, if you have a, a full double belt of each going in, if you want to. Put, no, if you want to produce a full belt coming out, then you need to produce three per second and a full belt. Uh, sorry, you need to produce six per second, and it takes three seconds to produce each one. So that means you need 18 machines. Cause that's the way it multiplies up, um, and it also means you're going to need 36 of each of the inputs per second. But that's less of an issue. Uh, going back up here, this one takes apparently one second. However. I realised I'd started with the Mark One assembly machines, uh, which have a, sp a production speed of 0.75. So that means that, despite sort of putting in those numbers of machines, it wasn't working. So over here, I've dropped in a, a machine that's that's upgrading um, upgrading from uh, assemb assembly machine one that I can chuck in here. So if I chuck those in there like that, they'll be pulled out into out of the chest into the into the assembly machine, which will upgrade them and then pass them back out again, put them back in the chest. So I've got like, 101. Um, uh, uh, Mark II assembly machine at this point, and so I can then go wander around over here, just upgrading them, which I think I've already, mostly already done. Um, these are, are these, no, the, yeah. I, in fact, I have completely done. I've upgraded all of the assembly machines over here, so this is all now nice, nice and upgraded. And conveniently, upgrading from a Mark I to a Mark II assembly machine uses these processors. So I had loads of these available. I've just been pulling them straight back out of the uh, tower, as you can see here. Um, it also required the Bucky sheets, so I've brought some of those in from the other planet. But um, I brought those in in quite small numbers because I'm not going to need very many of them, and I might take them all away with me when I leave if I've got room in my inventory. Because once this is finished, I don't think I'm really going to need to do much more on this planet. So I touched on there being a bit of a, um, a supply problem. As you can see over here, all of these belts that are supposed to be full of silicon are completely empty because it's just it's getting through it far too quickly. And silicon's being brought from off planet. So if I zoom out again, you can see this planet has less than a million silicon. So instead of pulling it from here, I decided to pull it from Silly, this planet over here. So I've got Titan for titanium and copper as well, admittedly. But uh, and I've got Silly for silicon. It made it made it made sense at the time. Uh, that one has 11 million silicon ore on it. So there's loads and loads of silicon available there. But at the moment, planets are in sort of the opposite of conjugation. They're as far apart as it's possible to get. So it's taking a very long time for all of these spaceships to fly over with the silicon. So I'm so at that point I'm running low. Now at later at later on in the orbit, once the um, once Titan get un, and Silly get a bit closer together, then things are going to be a bit quicker. We're going to have um, it's going to take a lot less time to transport silicon across because they won't have to fly as far. And when they're sort of right next to each other, we'll be able to get it coming come across really quickly. Um, so this is the unfortunate problem with uh, flying stuff through space is you have to deal with orbital mechanics as, as, to an extent. Um, now fortunately I don't have to work out my transfer or orbits or anything like that. The, um, the little spaceship things are capable of just flying in a dead straight line from one planet to the other. So that's okay, kind of. But it does take them quite a long time. Now it's quite possible that I didn't put the in, in, in any um, spaceships in the in the uh, can at the other end. So here we've got the full ten spaceships here, and they're all in use. As you can see, we've got five thousand in in transit. Um, but it's quite possible that I didn't put any of these logistics vessels in the tower at the other end. So maybe a, a quick trip out to Silly to put down some to put some more of those in the towers would be a good idea. Maybe we'll have a look at that. So as you can see, we've had a, a, a spaceship has come in with five hundred silicon in it. Um, ooh, I'm making loads of power. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> And it lasts about about this long before we've suddenly run out, and we just it's all been fed straight out into the factory. This is a bit like the uh, the copper supply to the circuit factories in my in in the Factorio run. It's um it's problematic. That said, the tower over there is now full of uh, basically full, it's now completely full of circuit of processors. So we can now just build up a buffer here for when we start putting demand on the system, and when we'll. we'll, we'll We'll see how it goes, I guess. Um, it's 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 mostly okay, but it's also kind of slightly not. 
Um, I should also briefly touch on the fact that I am painting all of the um, all of the inputs here, so you can see the uh, the ores are getting painted as they come through here. And over here, we're painting the uh, um, painting all of the the, uh, the silicon and the and the copper and the copper plates as they go into the uh, into the machines over here. And the same over there for the um, for the iron and the copper that's going in to be made into circuits. And of course, over here for completeness. Also painting, I seem to have missed a bit, so there should actually be a belt going from, yes, into there like that. So we can now pass the paint across and we'll, um, we'll be getting the extra extra bonus production of all of the plates. Oops, apparently I forgot. Apparently I forgot a little bit of belt there. Um, but yes, that's, that's, that means I'm getting I'm getting a 20% productivity boost on each step. So I'm um, over here, all of this is getting, so we've got 120% coming out of here. I'm going to say 140%, even though it's slightly more, 140, 144% perhaps coming out of here and here because they do it there on the second step stage through and then it's going to be about 170 ish percent of, of, of processes made or or using a um one over 170 percent so some, something like 65 percent 875 percent i don't know I can't, I can't do the math i can't divide by 1.7 in my head i'm afraid um but using yes using a, yeah using about sort of 1.75 uh so th th no using about Try again. Using about three quarters of the uh, of the input resources over there to make the same number of processes over here, which is I think very worth the small amount of coal that's being used to paint. And that's all coming from back on Norvis, which has still has a decent amount of coal, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, still got seven million coal on Norvis, so we're doing we're doing okay there. Uh, this planet also has a few extra little bits and pieces on it, so I've put in um, a couple of copper mines like this. These are pulling up, obviously mining up the copper that I'm going to need for uh, for all of, all of the circuits I've been making. And I put a collection of um, these little um, energy collection dishes on both poles because it, apparently that's the best place to put them. Um, because these dishes gradually warm up over time, um, so they start off producing a small amount of power, and then if you leave them in the sun and carry on pulling it, sorry, not in the sun, if if you leave them with a view of the Dyson swarm um, and have them pulling power from the um, from it for a while, then the amount of power they're producing or capable of producing gradually goes up and up and up. And so you can see the. Uh, at the moment, we're producing 1.3 megawatts from this, and it's capable of producing 9.79 megawatts. Um, the, the the reason the number of is um, the 9.79 has been gradually going down and is different between the uh, dishes. He says, "Look at the one that's different." Um, is because if they're in, it, it depends on the amount. It depends on how good a view they have of the Dyson swarm, which I can't see at all from here, um, and and how much time they've spent in it. Because as I said, they need to warm up a little bit. So that's basically everything I've put on this planet. There are, there is a little bit of, um, I think there's an iron mine somewhere as well. But but there is also, there is a little bit of, um, uh, what do we call it, um, silicon somewhere on this planet. Uh, there's, there it is there. So I could come, I could come over and start mining this up, and that would solve the um, the silicon problem we've been seeing. However, on the flip side, it would mean that I would get, I'd just probably rip through the silicon relatively quickly because there's only three quarters of a million of it. I don't really have a feel for how long that would last. Probably long enough, actually, but it might. Be, yeah, it might. So I, I could set up a mine there and, and start pulling up that silicon. I don't know whether it's really worth it because we do now have enough of the um, enough of the processes made, and the silicon is. It will gradually start to fill up in the tower. Um, it hasn't yet, but it will eventually, and we'll ho hopefully eventually get a decent supply of it. So yeah, silicon's a little bit of a problem, but not too much of a problem. So speaking of the um, the energy dishes. <clears throat> I've been building up my Dyson Swarm, so as you can see over here, the amount being being be, the amount that has been being launched. So there was some there was some production supply issues at one point, and this was a this was actually very dangerous because it was a potential brownout risk um, because the guns on on Silly that are launching out the um, the solar sails that you can now see in a massive swarm of them around the sun here um, were running out of power, and so they were launching fewer sails, so the power problems were getting worse and worse and worse, and we got down to something like 25% satisfaction here. Now that's not quite as bad as it sounds because um, the satisfaction level is how satisfied the, the individual um, uh, dishes are. Whereas if we go in and have a look at the power uh, for the entire star cluster, just, just everything, over the last 10 hours. So I can come into this graph and I can look up how my, what my power, can, my, my power generation capacity and my consumption demand looks like. Now I think this generation capacity might be down to the number of um, 
Now, I think that must be down to the number of solar sails I've launched because of the steady increase that we've had here. I don't think that could be due to the number of dishes I've got set out there. So we're capable of producing 800 megawatts of um, power from all of the all of the from the entire Dyson Swarm, and we're using 180 180 megawatts of it. And yet somehow over here it still shows we're only at 67% satisfaction. So I think that's because I put out more dishes than I actually need to. So the dishes are all running at like 10% effectiveness or something. So this is in the swarm is incapable of keeping the dishes 100% satisfied. However, the dishes at the 20% satisfaction or the 60 the 70% satisfaction are more than capable of keeping all of the buildings on their planets satisfied. So, <clears throat> I, it's a two because the power delivery is a two-stage process. Whilst I'm absolutely, f whilst I've got enough power overall, because the middle step doesn't think it's got enough, we're still seeing a mere 70% satisfaction here. However, because I've gone out and put in, well, actually, let's let's go over to the other planet and have a look. It's a long way to silly. As previously mentioned, it's right on the other side of the uh, solar system. So, however, I have now developed new technology, which allows me to make a very loud noise and go into warp mode. And after much practice, I've learned how to actually drop out of warp mode correctly. You wait till you're nearly there and hit the button again, and then you can correct your course and then come in and try and land on the planet you're aiming for. Now, this warp mode does require fuel, um, but the fuel is it's relatively cheap. Um, land, please. Land, there we go. Right, so the fuel is relatively cheap. It requires where are they? Warp things. These things. These warp space warpers. Um, each of which requires a gravitron lens, which is a diamond. And, okay, they're not that cheap, but I've got a load of gravitron lenses that I've made and have, don't have anything to do with them. In the future, I should be able to make them from um, green science, which is probably better. Um, actually, that does now that still requires a gravitron lens and a um, and a processor. So actually, it's, it's, it, it, it's no better. It, it's actually significantly more expensive unless this makes more of them. Oh no, that makes eight of them. So I can make one from a single lens, or I can make eight from a from a green science. So that actually does seem worth it. So one blue processor turns into an additional seven warp cores. I think that's going to be very, very worth having. So yeah, these are the guns up here that are launching my solar sails. And in an attempt to make things a little bit more, um, a little bit better, to improve my solar my solar uh, Dyson swarm, I have put in quite a lot of extra guns. I've, I think my my aim was to roughly double it. Well, no, that doesn't have power. That's a mistake. Um, yeah, my aim was to roughly double the number of guns I had launching these things. There we go, now it's happy. And so, that has led to a, a much denser Dyson Swarm out here. Uh, there's a lot more... Um, what I should have done, really, is put them in with uh, aiming at a different, um, a different orbit, so I could have had two separate ones, but I didn't think of that at the time, and it's now a bit late to bother with that. So, but yes, this is now launching out the uh, Dyson sails a bit more quickly, like um, twice as quickly as before. So this should bring us, when this is sort of stabilised a bit, we seem to have more than twice as much. So this was after I fixed the power problems. It's going nice and steady across there. This was when I put in the extra guns, and it seems to have... <clears throat> I've said that, that you know, maybe that's slightly more than double. Maybe I put in slightly more than twice as many guns. Um, but we're now getting to the point where we've got these these bumps across here, and that I think is down to how good a view of the of the sky the guns have, and exactly where I distributed them. Because these ones over here, you can see they've gone orange because they can't see the uh, the sky. They can't see the right part of the sky anymore. These ones are blue because they're still working. And I wasn't very careful about exactly where I put them down. So I think there's one side of the planet has more of them than the other. <laughs> With the extra guns in here now, yeah, okay, we're barely, we are actually, at the, right now, we are just about producing enough solar cells. You can tell because this belt isn't running constantly, it's occasionally pausing. Um, however, when it was, when I uh, looked at it uh, last time, and we must have been at a different point on this on this uh, curve here, probably on the high point of the curve, the belt was actually running flat out, which meant I probably wasn't quite producing enough of them. However, this is enough for current currently what we're trying to make at the moment so I don't I'm not too worried about it yes technically we aren't making quite as many solar cells as we could be launching but we've got more than enough power available so I think actually it's all absolutely fine I'm not going to worry about this at all the other thing thinking of Dyson Dysonary stuff is that I've been launching the um I've still been launching the uh, the rocket things, and I've just left that running. I have one rocket launch silo and one machine feeding it with rockets, so it's it's very very slow at the moment. But it's something I do, I can't really do much more about creating my Dyson sphere until I've done some research. So I haven't really it's it's not been a high priority. But we are gradually building up these little, these node things. So this one has now got uh, 29 out of its 110. You can see why this is taking a long time. This one over here has got the wings poking out the side of it. This one's doing really well. This one's got all the way up to 33 out of 100. 110. So it's managed to put out some struts out the side of it, um, and eventually, yeah, I mean, we are producing a little bit of power from our, from the uh, Dyson shell, uh, 22 megawatts out of the one. 
what uh, one gig compared to the one gigawatt that's being produced by the swarm here. Um, but the swarm I've been building for a lot longer. So yeah, so that's like, oh, this one's put out two pieces of uh, strut. How, how are you getting on? You've got to 58 out of 90. Wow. So there's, yeah, as you can see, it's going to take a lot of, it's going to take a very long time to finish this ring. However, the ring on its own is not enormously useful. Uh, it does have the advantage that the solar sails that are being included in it won't won't die. So the 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 ones in the um in the in in the swarm have a lifespan. So when they launch, they'll last for nine thousand seconds, which is what fifteen minutes. Um, and the ones at the other end will eventually drop off the bottom. No, one hundred and fifty minutes. Uh, sorry, <laughs> two and a half hours. So eventually they, they eventually they'll decay and, and just fall apart uh, and stop working. However, if you get them into the Dyson shell, then they will last forever. So this this one point this uh, 2.2.7 megawatts will last forever and will gradually carry on going upwards. This one point uh, one point oh eight gigawatts. Um, well, once it gets to the steady state and we've got rid of this low patch at the side here, then it'll it'll stay at that same amount of power rather than going up because we're launching them and uh, and they're disintegrating at the same rate. So it's um. So it's, it's slightly wasteful, but it has been producing plenty of power and it's, it's, it's working quite nicely. But as I say, I need to do more research before I can actually expand out into this red area up here. Um, so it's not. I, I've decided I'm going to concentrate on things other than trying to get more rockets launching. Um, that's going to be a thing I will do later. I think that that covers the the main things I've been doing. I, I appear to put down some more solar over here. That's quite nice. Um, I'm just going to nip over to Norbis and have a look around on there and see if there's anything else that I've forgotten about that I haven't. It's have, basically anything else that I haven't told you about. So, Norvis, what have I been doing down here? I don't think I did very much on this planet. There was a bit of sort of running backwards and forwards, collecting belts and things. And someone in the video in the stream comments pointed out that I should start bringing the, uh, the putting the belts into the um, into, into the logistics tower so that I can request a load more of them when I'm on a different planet. And that's actually quite a good idea. I shall have to do that next time. But one thing I did do here was started building up these um, these hydrogen collectors because, as we touched on previously, the, the, the systems I'm running at the moment are very, very hydrogen heavy um, because that's required for a lot of the later sciences. And the amount that was being produced from my oil processing, which I can't, oil processing here, was woefully insufficient. So, in, so now I've got this tower here that's producing. Actually, let's bring that down a little bit to. 9,000. So we've got this tower here that's storing all of the uh, all the hydrogen that's produced by the oil processing and all of the refined oil that's, that's being produced by it as well. Um, but it's also now bringing it in from off planet as well. And over here we've got we seem to have quite a supply of deuterium being uh, being used, being generated and used up as well. Uh, that's so that's using also using the hydrogen. But yes, it turns out the uh, the amount of hydrogen I was making here was woefully insufficient. So I've started making hydrogen collectors off planet. So if we if we blast off once again like that and go look for the, there's the gas giant so you want to go over there I've now started collecting um, hydrogen from over here as well which is rather nice so if I fly over you can you can sort of fly into and sort of fly along the surface of the gas giant which is um, interesting but let's not worry about that too much so I put in what's that that's my shadow <laughs> let's stop jumping at my own shadow somewhere on this planet then I have put down some um, hydrogen collectors and these, you can only put them on the equator, perhaps because they're meant to be in some sort of weird, very low orbit. I'm not quite sure. But there is apparently room on the room on the equator for about 40 of them. And I've put down about four or five so far. So these things just float there in the... Um, above the ground and as you can see looking at them they're, they're sucking up the uh, the gas giant they're sucking up hydrogen and deuterium which can then be shipped out from here by the um, by, uh, by my normal logistics vessels and carried back to the uh, main planet where we can then use it for um, for various hydrogen based processes so that's quite this is this is quite useful this means I now have basically an unlimited supply of hydrogen now granted the the rate might be insufficient but I can always come out and put more of these towers down actually that's more than four one two three four Maybe I put down six, because so I think there's one on the other side of the planet as well. Um, but yeah, we've got a load of these, gathering up the hydrogen and making it available back on the other planet. And that was that was nice and easy. That worked. That went really well. It was just simple to throw it, throw it together and, and start generating the hydrogen. So I think that covers I think that covers everything I've been doing. So um, at the moment things are going quite well. My my go my current goal is still green science. Um, and as, as you might hopefully remember from last time, I've got a, I've got a, a facility here on Norvis that's making up the uh, the quantum chips, the blue circuits, at a reasonable rate. But it didn't have any processors up for it. So let's let's let's, let's find out. Yes, here it is. This one. So this is this was making making this is making blue circuits. In fact, it's now got to the point where the tower is completely full by the looks of it. But yes, we're completely full of blue circuits because suddenly we've had enough. Um, 
processors being brought in because of the supplies being made out on Titan. And so, oops, oh. so we now have a plentiful supply of those blue circuits, and that means I can now start making the um, the green green. Well, I can start making the gravitron lenses, which requires diamonds, which are fairly trivial. That's just squash coal down into carbon. Uh, sorry, squash carbon down into diamonds, and then also these things, uh, the particle colliders. Uh, these are a bit more effort to make, but. I think I think I now have a reasonable supply of all the things that go into these, so I don't think this is going to be too difficult. Um, yeah, we should be able to throw all of this together without too much difficulty. I, I think um, we might be putting the, um, the the machines that are making the, uh, the, the these things, the uh, turbines, under a bit of strain. But I'm, I'll probably just end up making these somewhere else and then trying to make the uh, these particle containers in their own little factory area. Um, I could even consider doing this somewhere on a different planet, actually. Um, I, I don't know, undecided. Because I'm doing all the science on Norvis at the moment, so if I, if I end up making the green, uh, green science somewhere else, then I'm going to have to ship it over here by a uh, logistics system. Now, that's not really a problem, um, unless the planets are miles and miles apart, and then it, then it tends to be a little bit slow. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what I feel like about that one, I think. Uh, once I've done that, I can then start doing the warp stuff. I can, oh, mo most importantly, I can then start making these rockets a lot more quickly. That's going to be the next big thing, I think. So that, as you can see, requires the blue circuits. So we're going to need a lot. So that's another reason to need a lot of these. It's also going to take a lot of these um, deuterium fuel rods. So that's, I mean, it's manageable. We need, we're going to need titanium and, and steel for, and acid for that. Mm, that's, that's quite a lot of stuff. Deuterium, that's easy. Um, Super magnetic rings, there again, another thing that's a bit of a faff to make because they require lots of the turbines and so on. So I think I'm going to need some more. Yeah, it's going to take. It's going to be quite a lot of building stuff up in order to get all the bits and pieces that I need for the uh, for the um, for the rockets. And also, I'm going to need these diastasphere components. That's another thing that needs processors. But we now have plenty of those. The sails we're making at a decent rate, as we've seen, um, and the frame materials is. I mean, it's it's not it's not impossible stuff. It's stuff that we already have at least a, some supply of. So I'm going to need to then start making. I'm going to need to make a big rocket launch facility that's just going to send launch many 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 rockets in order to keep in order to start building that swarm a bit more. Sorry, not the swarm. In order to start building the Dyson sphere a bit more quickly and effectively. And that's also going to require me to have done some of the Dyson sphere researches, uh, like this one, which as you can see requires green uh, green science. So I need to do this one. It's level one, and then I'll get some more upgrades after that, presumably. Um, but until I've got green science up and running, I can't do anything with this. Which is why I've been waiting. Uh, which is why I've been prioritizing, prioritizing green science and just leaving my single rocket launch facility um, wherever it is. On the it's on the end of the bus. I know that much. Yes, my single rocket launch facility here, just ticking away all by itself. And every so often, this there we go. A, a rocket gets passed over to it. That was really good timing. Uh, get the rocket out like that, and shoop, it launches. And then we can see it fly away from the planet like that. Down into the into, into the in, in towards my the, the uh, nascent Dyson sphere, where it'll dock with one of these um, one of these things, and and um, and we'll and, and we'll and we'll give it a very very small upgrade. Where's it going? Let's see. There, there it is. It's coming around this way. Which one's it going to? Presumably this one. Yeah, it looks like this one. Um, so if I if I close this and go into the Dyson sphere information, you can often yeah there we go. It's docking there. So we can see this is going to go from 100 and, sorry 35 to Maybe I missed it. Maybe it went from 34 to 35. Anyway, yes, they're all being flown out here and being made into part of the and added to the Dyson Swarm. So I should be carrying on with that on uh, on Wednesday evening at 7:30 p.m. UK time. Please come along and watch the stream. Um, <clears throat> so that'll be yes, getting green science up and running is I think going to be my next priority because I feel like I've got all the prereqs for that together now. Monday night will be the um, will be Factorio as usual. So we're uh, we're making some good progress there. I'm out off on another planet, as is Tristan, and we're trying to make ice and fire um, uh, elements or materials, whatever however we want to look at them. And the other guys are making modules and um, and doing combat a bit recently. We'll see we'll see what happens next week though. These catch up videos come out at the weekend, as you're well aware. So there's the Dyson Sphere program one on Sundays, at least most of the time, and the uh, Factorio ones on Friday and Saturday. And I've got some other videos in the works, so keep an eye out for those as as, as and when they appear. As always, thank you for watching. Please check out the stream sponsor, that's trefoil.be. Uh, use some code uh, Lawrence Plays to get your first month free for your hosting services. But they And they host servers for games like uh, like Factorio and Minecraft and Seven Days to Die, Mindustry, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, and um, yeah, please please check them out, check out the sponsor, support the sponsor, support the channel. You know how it goes. So, as ever, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.